everybody. Um, I, it is hot tub time talk. Hot tub talk hot time. Tub. If you cannot hear me or Guinevere, let me know because I'm doing the bubbles this time. And um, so I don't know. I don't know if you're not going to be able to hear me. So, hi everybody. Um, I am here. I'm Jane Clark. <laughs> I am Jane Clark. And I am here with my dear friend Guinevere Turner. Cheers. Which some of you, whom some of you might know, and some of you may not. Um, Guinevere and I did a film called Crazy Bitches. Uh, hey, Sherry. Um, which we shot in 2013. And since then, we've been fast friends. I met Guinevere through, actually, a very dear friend of ours, J.D. DeSalvatore, who passed away last Thursday. So, you know, cheers to J.D. Um, we were at a women's outfest soiree. It was a fundraiser, and I was sitting with JD, and Guinevere came walking across, and JD That's said, a "Impression of me, <laughs> swanning about." You were. You were so. You, she swans. Um, and JD's like, "Hey, Guinevere, Jane's doing this movie called Crazy Bitches, and don't you think you should be in it?" And I was like, "And Guinevere's like, yeah." Totally. Totally. <laughs> and I was like, I don't, you know, don't go offering roles, JD. Just calm down. And this random chick. Let me figure <laughs> out who she is and what she does and, you know, let me figure this out. And JD's like, no, no, you really want her in your movie, Jane. And I'm like, ah, yeah, shut up, JD. <laughs> but she wouldn't stop until I agreed to meet with Guinevere. And I sent her the script. And what did you, what was your thought when you? Well, it will be a spoiler alert if I tell, if I say what my reaction was. That's okay, because, you know, if you haven't seen it, you should, but... Um, it, which is that there's a part, there's a woman who always wears high heels, and everyone in the movie dies um, from their, at the end of their vanity. And so the character gets killed with a high heel to the eye, and I am a high heel... It's not even a fanatic thing, it's like a way of life. They're like boobs, I always wear high heels, and so <laughs> it was just sort of, it was tailor-made for me. That's how I die. Yeah, and, and that was her, that's exactly what she said to me. I cannot believe you basically wrote this role and it's me. Before you knew me. Before I knew her. And it, from then on it was just, oh yeah, there was no doubt she had to play it. And we had a really good time. And and since then... Oh no, and it should be noted that um, you were like... Are you sure you want to, like, you know, you, you have to, you're going to have to, like, run in oh. woods, <laughs> in heels, and I was like, I can do anything in heels, which is true, um, but I had just recovered from uh, an accident where I tore ligaments in my foot, and I had to walk with a cane, with no high heels for six months, and I was so happy to be back in the saddle, and then as I was standing there in the woods, in the heels, and, re and realized, oh, I actually have to look behind me, and run forward, and it's real, like, there's actual branches, and I, and I was like... I actually, it was scary. I don't pray, yeah. but I actually, after we did the first take, I was like, what the was I thinking? And then I just sat, said a little prayer, like, please, please don't let me hurt myself this way. I was so braggy. I'm like, no problem. No problem. I hurt myself. And of course, I'm always very worried about my actors, so I did. I was. I was like, are you sure? Because this is, and it, and it was really bumpy ground, and, but it was kind of cute. I have, I have footage of the killer. Um, Holding, Guinevere's holding his arm and he's walking her back to her <laughs> place so she could start again. It was really, it was fun. And then she had to get this really weird thing put on her eye where the heel goes in and all this blood dripping down so she couldn't see anything. And she was had laying in the dust. It was fun. Yeah, it was good. I, I've got other good things for her to do coming up, but um, in yeah, fact, we just did. Yes. <laughs> so Jane and I wrote a movie together called Don't Come Over. And it's in this movie I play uh, a romance novelist who's very successful but uh, has writer's block for her new, uh, much anticipated next book. And she's kind of losing her mind and she goes off her meds and she gets into a jealous rage and she does a lot of crazy stuff. And what she really wants is for people to leave her alone. And she keeps telling them not to come over and they do come over and so she kills them. As you do. And the, and the tagline is, seriously, don't come over. <laughs> We're really pleased with ourselves. 
Um, and we just so so uh, in an effort to sort of start getting the word out about the about the film and to try to help us raise money, I had come up with this idea to make a short virtual reality film um, with somebody I met in Cannes. And so we got to test out Guinevere's character and have a little fun with that. And we shot that at the end of July. What do you do? What do you, what do you two like working together? Working together. Um, what do we like? I didn't say I liked it. <laughs> yeah, didn't that make you hear what I just said? <laughs> um, no, uh, I think that just that we always have fun with it, even when it's like stressful yeah. or messy or dirty or you know painful. <laughs> we always laugh, and you know we're not we're neither of us are the kind of people who loses their shit on the set. No, I would say that's true. And also, I think that we both have sort of uh, come up as sort of make it work kind of filmmakers. You know, where we all worked in the low budget realm a lot and. You just know there's no reason to get upset about anything. So if stuff gets difficult or things go wrong, you know where other people might, you know, get stressed about it. We tend to just have some fun anyway. Right. And, and I think and it's our personalities mesh really well. And seeing and seeing it all as like an adventure and a problem-solving exercise rather than a crisis. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like, well, if I can handle this, then I'm cool. Yeah. And I, I'm, I, you know, it's like it's harder than if we had a million dollars and a million weeks. Yeah. I think it is harder. It's yeah. a lot harder. I also think, and I, I, you know, I knew that we had a like sensibility just as friends because we hang out a decent amount of time together. Um, but when we were when we were working on the script together, what I also realized is we had compatibility from a from a writing creative standpoint, and that we just sort of enjoyed each other's ideas and thought about the process. I think in a very similar similar way, even though Guinevere had to show me her card. Her card technique, because I'm not a card technique person, but... Hi, Betsy. Hi, Betsy. Um, um, uh, yeah, and I think that that's actually, you know, I always talk about collaboration and how you can, you can really like someone as a person and socially and as a friend and even as a good friend, but it doesn't mean that if you sit down around a kitchen yeah. table, as we did, and just spend eight hours talking about different ideas, that you're necessarily going to have work, uh, compatible styles in the sense that, you know, like th that your egos match in a way so that if I say, mm, no, but yeah. you're not going to get offended, you're just going to listen, yeah. and vice versa, and that and that you know this idea of being able to build on each other's ideas without yeah. defending our ideas just out of from a place of you know uh, fear is really important. And some people just some people just collaborate better than others. And some people it's it's like dating. Yeah, it is a little bit like dating. <laughs> you know, like you just yeah. never know. Yeah, it's true. And I, I do think also when you when e each of us on our own has done a lot of work in a lot of different fields, artistic fields, so I think we both feel confident as writers and we feel confident that, you know, if she thinks that something might go a different direction, I'm excited to hear about it. I'm not worried about whether it's going to be a judgment on me as a writer. Oh, hey, Kyle. Hi, Chris. Hi, Kyle and Chris. I um um I have a question for you. In the up upcoming Crazy Bitches web series, yes, ma'am. What do I have to do that's hard? What do you have to do that's hard? I haven't read the script yet. Yeah, I'm. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm. Um, I'm. I'm halfway through episode six, which I think is gonna probably be the end of the first season. So we're gonna shoot six episodes in six days. Top five things that I think are hard. Um, Making out with someone horrible. No, that's not going to happen. <laughs> You're um, going to make out, but it's not going to be somebody horrible. horrible. Um, um, what else? Uh, it, it's always going to you know, it's going to be too hot or too cold. That's just There's no universal. running. We're shooting up in Carpinteria, so it should be beautiful. It's beautiful up right. there. Um, I you don't have to get in the pool if you don't want to. Oh, yeah, I guess, like, things about, like, get, get, having to get into the ocean when it's, yeah. you know, October. Yoga? Do you like doing yoga? Uh, okay, so that's that's hard. <laughs> it's not, I mean, I've done yoga, but it doesn't like come naturally to yeah. me. You're allowed to look like you don't know what you're doing. Okay, good. You don't need to know. Good. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Um, what about, am I going to have a wig? I don't know what I'm going to do about your hair. Because, hi, Janet, and hey, Sheila. Hi, Janet, and hey, Sheila. Um, uh... 
because if, if the, you know, if it is the kind of thing that ends up being maybe perhaps knock down, drag out physical fights, the wig's gonna have to stay like it's really my hair. I know. And also wigs yeah. are super hot. I'm, I'm all for a wig because I, because I know you want the character to be blonde and that's exciting to me. Um, yeah, we're gonna have to go wig shopping. I have to earn the money first or raise the money first, but yeah, the idea is that... I just do a GoFundMe just for the wig. Yeah. <laughs> Guinevere's wig. Who wants to buy it? Um, so the, the idea is that some people who may have died in the first film are going to come back as new characters. And this is also a bridge into the second feature. So um, Guinevere's character is a soap star, like Susan Lucci. Only, so fun. I love that so much. Only blonde. Well, my hope is she's blonde, and you know, you're right, wigs are difficult. Um, you do have, you, if, uh, episode six is going to get very, it'll get a little active. <laughs> I'll say like downward dog with a wig on might be a problem. That's true. <laughs> well, I'll figure something out. Really, Trey McCurley is uh, making an appearance, and um, he's very good at yoga, so I, I am going to have him out yoging everybody uh, with his beautiful body. So that's what I'm doing. You're yeah. welcome, gay men. <laughs> <laughs> and straight women. Yes, you're welcome, people who are attracted to you're me. You're a very, very attractive guy. Um, so, what else? What will my character. Oh, Sheila. I don't know what your character's gonna be, Sheila, but you're gonna have to get yourself out here and I'll figure out something. You could be. Ooh, hmm, we'll talk. Let's, who, I, who's Sheila? Sheila is a friend who. Uh, is living where do you guys live now north carolina georgia anyway she really wants to be in one of my movies and i keep promising her something and one of these days i'm gonna have to uh i'm gonna have to do it right so anyway let's see we are those are the things we're working on what uh what is taking you away this fall she's gonna be whenever's gonna be away a lot so we've had to kind of schedule the shoot for crazy bitches around when she's going to be back in Los Angeles, because you're teaching. Yes, I'm going to New York to teach uh, screenwriting at Columbia University. Columbia. Um, and I also am going to London to be in a web series. It's, the, it's season two of a web series called Different for Girls, which you can find on YouTube on, I think it's called the Lesbian Box Office. The first season is on there. And we're coming back for more. Um, it's a, it, it, the, the character that I play in Different for Girls never makes jokes, is really mad at everyone, and doesn't wear heels, and not much makeup. I Are you like, kind of, what? I'm grumpy. Aww. I'm grumpy and sensible. Which is mm. fun for me, but not not who I am in real life. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's nice to see they could, they could see your range. You had the ability right. to go grumpy. <laughs> yes. Not That's everybody so knows that, but Gwen Berry has the ability to go grumpy when she wants to. <laughs> um, um, and, yeah, and then I'm... Um, going to be coming back here to shoot with you, hopefully, somewhere, but then running back to teach, and then back and forth, back and forth. And then hopefully, in November, a film that I wrote, uh, which is casting right now, which is called Kill Your Ego, which is directed by Mary Heron, who I did the film American Psycho with, among other things, uh, is going to be shooting here in L.A. in November. That's, yeah, that's so really cool. That's very Can you exciting. tell them what it's about, or is it just... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. It's really cool. I'm dying to talk about it all the time. Uh, it's um, called Kill Your Ego, and it's about the women, the three women who went to prison for killing for Charles Manson back in the famous murders of 1969, but it follows them in prison. And so it's kind of the part where, that no one talked about. Uh, you know, they sort of, they had the sensational trial, and then they just went away. But what happened in real life is they were sentenced to the death penalty. They were put in a special security unit because they were considered the most dangerous criminals in the world. Three 19-year-old girls. And, um... They, I mean, they did some really fucked up things. Um, and, uh, and, but then a year into their, they were sentenced to the death penalty, and then a year into it, they, the death penalty was lifted, and all of a sudden they were faced with life imprisonment. And the story is about the woman who was sent in to teach them, as the warden said, give them a feminist consciousness. And she wrote a book that it's based on, in which uh, she watched each of them kind of get unbrainwashed and come to grips with what they did in their own way. Um, so it's, you know, it's it's a, it's an intense story. It's, I, there's like, what's amazing is that there's actually a couple of places that are funny. Well, you wrote it, so <laughs> I have no but doubt. Like, that's it's not true. like, but it's not like, a, it's not a belly lapper. 
Yeah. Well, no, I hope not. Well, except that, you know, don't come over is pretty gruesome, but that's a belly laugher. Yeah. To us I mean, it is. Hopefully to yeah. everyone else. Yeah. It might just be that sitting sitting by ourselves in our own little room, we thought things were funnier than they actually are. But what's crazy when they learned when we did the shoot the other t day, who knew? But actually, operating a chainsaw takes a lot of upper body strength. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was so tragic. That was supposed to be this great shot where I'm just like, don't worry, I'll wait till your dad to cut you up. And then I go, Rawr! but I was like, eh, eh, eh. we took her outside <laughs> do it. to show her how to do it. And you know, have her practice, and she could never, she couldn't get it. She couldn't even get the the um, the string like halfway. I had no idea. It was so bad. But uh, <laughs> but sorry, right. she's gonna practice and work out, yeah. and when we shoot the feature, she'll be able class. to do it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that would be going on your list of really difficult things to do in a movie. Yes, but yeah. but also like who? I, I was so mortified. Oh well, no, I don't think you need to be. How hard is writing a horror comedy, and why? I think writing any comedy is hard because uh, you don't, um, because what's funny to us might not be funny to other people, yeah. and it, especially when you're writing a horror comedy, it's sort of like, will people be able to look past the gruesomeness of this and see that it's comedic, yeah. considering that there's blood and death yeah. and insanity and yeah. confusion and mayhem. Uh, it is, it's a, you have to, it's a little bit of a line to walk between, um, because you don't, I personally don't want to make, you know, the horror part of it glorified or uh, like I, but the comedy kind of lends itself to keeping some sense of awareness that this is a movie and not reality I think right but it is it really is you kind of have to go on your instincts and you have to you know if it's making you laugh while you're writing it or when you're reading it out loud or like when we were when we were shooting the virtual reality, we had little parts where I was just la I just thought it was so funny, and I kept saying to the DP, I'm like, that's that's so funny, that's gonna be so funny, and I don't think he really like I think he was kind of like, what? That's really gross, and that thing is she's doing that, and that's but I'm like, no, no, no that's really funny, you but you but it's, you gotta see it in context. You do have to see it as you have to see it in context, but but you know in like, reality, you don't really know until you get into the movie theater. Right. I mean, you have to. Trust your instincts, and then when it projects, and you're with an audience, that's when you find out whether whether it really is funny or it's not funny. And but then part of part of the thing too is that you have to accept that what you're doing is not going to be everyone's piece of cup cake. of tea. Yeah, that's true too. So you just have yeah. to know that you know some people will never see it just because they know it's a horror movie, and yeah. they will miss out on all the fun. Yeah. I mean, I'm actually guilty of that. There's probably some really great horrors. I can't even watch American Horror Story because I'm too scared, even though I've heard it's amazing. Yeah, it is. It's gotten... I, I don't love it as much now, but... But, yeah, it's it's an interesting process, and you just hope that people think your sense of humor is funny. Or at least you are you have enough people out there that make it worth uh, making the movie, you know. I, I don't know. And I usually can tell, too, when I'm shooting it and I'm, while I'm watching the actors... Because I'll be sitting behind the monitor going, that's so funny! And, you know, I've had people around me, because I had, Meth had actually had, I had written some humor into Meth Head, and, and that was tricky because the subject matter was so serious, and people were, they, they sort of went into the theater ready to be, you know, ready to really be taken on this drug ride, and... Uh, if if we were if one of our two of us were in the audience where we could start the laughter so people knew it was okay, all the places I thought would be funny played, and if oh the bubbles, um, and but if I if I wasn't there to start it and people were just walking in there to watch it, it was taken so seriously that the humor it might have made them smile inside, but I'm not sure they felt comfortable actually actually taking the more fun part of the ride, but. So I think I, mis I actually miscalculated on that movie in terms of how I thought people, how, how I had hoped people would receive it. So. Am I turning bright red? No, you have a lovely feels, pink glow. It's so hot. You it's have really a, hot here, like really hot, and then we're in a hot tub. Yeah, but it's <laughs> only body temperature, the but hot that, tub. The body temperature is 98.2, right? Seven. No. That's a radio station. See, I'm losing it. <laughs> I hate anyway. summer, I really do. Do you? Yeah, I don't. I, I, I don't like being in direct sunlight, but I don't hate summer. <laughs>
Bob is over there nodding and he's sweating too. It's really hot in the hot tub. <laughs> anyway, what else? What else can we talk about, Guinevere? Um, let's see. I don't know. I'm, I'm losing my... I'm losing my, losing my... She already <laughs> had a really <laughs> important meeting earlier today and an, another interview earlier today. So I got her, I got her tired. Um, but, um... Let's see, what else? What, what last sensational thing can we wrap up with? Well, why, why, what is, like, what is the hardest thing you've ever done on film? Oh. Um, Robert is pointing at you. <laughs> yes, Bob? Bob? Okay. What is, what is, what is? The hardest thing I've ever done on film was I was someone who was being hanged by a belt and... I, in order to get the energy going, I was taking deep breaths before every take, and in order to not actually choke, I had my hands in between the belt and my neck. But uh, if you hyperventilate and then press against your neck, guess what happens? You lose consciousness. Yeah. Which Did is, you? Which is what happened. Oh and my so god. I, and I was standing on tiptoes to do it, so when I lost consciousness, I really was hanging. But the, the director was looking at the monitor, and so she just saw me fall out of frame. And she, she, she said, she was like, what is she doing? But oh luckily, people on the crew were like, holy shit. Can I just tell you that they should have, I because I did a hanging scene, but they had a rig. So I had a, a rig down my back and this strap around my waist. So you didn't see it, but I was actually rigged up so that I was, so the weight, my, my waist and hips were bearing the weight. So that I, but, but those guys left me up there because they knew I was safe. So they were having an argument about the scene and some, some shooting issues. And I was like, um, I'm still hanging here with something around my neck. Yeah, I, I learned from that experience that I, I would never be like, ah, it'll be fine, because I've almost died. Yeah. I, I, that's, I, I was young, and I wasn't in a position or in the, in the knowledge of, like, you need to insist that's on something. Thing. Like, yeah. it's all fun games until someone dies, and then yeah. it's not like, ooh, we're doing it DIY. It's like, no, someone's dead. Like, yeah. like that's not, we didn't, want to, we didn't want that to happen. So now I'm all, I listen to the safety speeches. I like the safety speeches. <laughs> They're important. Your AD gave a good safety speech the other day on our shoot. Yeah. So I was like, I felt it. I was like, yeah, yeah. take that shit seriously. Yeah, yeah. You got to. You have to protect your money makers. <laughs> <laughs> or your friends. <laughs> um, okay, well, uh, what is Clexicon? Why are you attending? Oh, Clexicon. What is Clexicon? Clexicon is basically the LGBT Comic Con. It's in Vegas. It's in April. Um, uh, they asked me to come there and talk on uh, some panels. My idea for two panels was based on hilarious conversations I had. Was one getting a panel full of actors, directors, and writers to talk about sex scenes. Oh yeah. Like okay. what's it like to do them? What it's like to write them? What it's like to shoot them? I think will just you know that I think so many people don't who don't do it don't have any idea what goes into it and yeah. just how awkward it is at every point. Yeah. I mean, just writing it and then having other people read it and you're like. Yeah. Sorry, I wrote that, but you know, I had to do it. And you, know, you always want to go, and then they do stuff. Yeah. yeah. They, they make love. They make love. You're like, no, how do they make love? They kiss and then <laughs> things happen. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then that panel, and then a second panel um, that I want to do uh, called um, Parts I Didn't Get. Oh, cool. And just start, they're talking about auditions, and especially in the LGBTQ space that, you know, like, you, you're not gay enough, or you're too gay, or you're, you know, so just getting a bunch of actors, LGBT actors, to talk about that experience, I think is really, this, this when you ask that question to actors, you get some really funny stories, you yeah. know, you're yeah. an actor too. Like, yeah. just weird stuff happens in auditions, and by and large, um, humiliating and, like, soul-crushing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, makes for good stories. It, it, absolutely. And then you either stick through it, or you quit. If unlimited funds, what movie would you be in or make? If unlimited funds, I want to make, uh, I have been saying for years I want to make the lesbian James Bond. Tell but apparently cool. Atomic Blonde is kind of it that. It is kind of that. I haven't <laughs> seen it. Don't spoil. But, um, but something like that where, where a lesbian gets to be some sort of giant, epic um, action heroes, uh, maybe superhero, and then for me personally, I really want to play a supervillain. Really? I really want to play a supervillain. I've been thinking... Um, well, you kind of are in Don't Come Over. Yes, but I want to be like one with like you know actual superheroes yeah. as foes and uh -huh. all of that. And um, and actually, there's something coming out uh, in mid-September, an animated series called Lesbian Cops, 
and in it, I'm the voice of a villain, a really cool villain, and that's what gave me the idea. I was watching it, the director showed it to me the other day, um, and I was like, oh my god, that might be my calling. <laughs> I really, I'm good at that. It'd so, be fun, anyway. So that's what I want. Somebody write me a super villain part, please. I'll get, I'll get to it right <laughs> after I, you know, finish the six scripts I already am trying to get financed, but... All right, so we're finishing up. I think we've been uh, enjoying ourselves, but beginning to sweat a little more than we want to <laughs> because it is 95 degrees here in L.A. I love you guys for joining us. Thank you. And um, just so you know, I, I was going to start my Indiegogo today and let Guinevere launch it for me, but because of J.D.'s passing, uh, I've had to take some time to um, help her family. So... Um, we are launching next Tuesday. I'm going to need all my friends and loved ones and fans and Guinevere's fans. and I'm going to need everybody to help us on this because we're going to have to make our dollars in order to be able to pay for this web series day, which is set for September 29th, Guinevere. September 29th, I'll be back. <laughs> <sighs> okay, you guys, love you. Check in with me. And um, I think uh, I will be posting a new hot tub talk Kathy DeBorno, I think, is doing it on Sunday, and Mandal is going to do it on Tuesday. So, uh, but I will post it and let you guys know, and I will see you later. Bye.